recording. Hi, Connie. Right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, there are currently consecutive town sessions going on, our meeting and another meeting. So if right. by chance we get bumped from this meeting, please okay. log back in, give it a minute or two and log back in as well. Okay. To try and get All right, we're, no, we're back. We're back in, but we're just, Mike is just afraid. We'll give Regina a second and then we'll start our meeting. Um, Connie says that the grant committee has been told to use a different number, so we, we shouldn't be disturbed. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone, welcome to the Board of Adjustment meeting for the Township of Berkeley Heights. This is our virtual online public meeting. Today is May 27th, 2021, and we have 734 on the clock. This meeting is being held electronically via Zoom virtual meeting service and will be conducted in performance with all regulations of the Sunshine Law. Proper notice has been posted on the township website and sent to the newspaper of record. The agenda for the meeting has been posted on the township website and the bulletin board of the town hall. Instructions for public participation in the meeting has been posted on the township website and sent to the newspaper of record. The agenda items will not necessarily be heard in the order listed in the meeting will not continue substantially past 10.30 p.m. Can we get a roll call? Mr. Sullivan. Send his regrets. Mr. Kobe. Mr. Cobiello. Here. Mr. Delia. Here. Mr. Nappy. Here. Mr. Ringwood. Here. Mr. Sylvester. Here. Mr. Pareda. Sends his regrets. Not here. Ms. Wolf. Here. Has anybody had an opportunity to read the minutes from April 29th, 2021? I read the minutes. I believe they're in order. I'll make a motion to pass. I'll second the motion. Mr. Dedalia? Or is it just Bob and I? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, applications for review. The first one, the order for tonight will be Chaucer Drive, Timber, Watchung Boulevard, Shadow Lane. After that, we will take a look at uh, requests for amendments to prior approvals. So first up will be Chaucer Drive. And Mrs. Wagner, if you could unmute. Sure, thank you, hello. And Ms. Wagner, is there any other uh, professionals or anybody else joining you this evening? Um, the architect, David Rosen, should be on. Okay, we can, uh, Mr. Rosen, you could unmute. Thank you. For the record, I'll advise that I did review the notice and it was sufficient as to form and content. So the board does have jurisdiction to hear this matter. And I will swear in our applicant and our witness. If you would raise your right hand, both of you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, yes I do. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Chair. So if you could please tell us a little bit about your application, what brings you here this evening? Well, I'd like to make some home improvements to my home, um, a front entrance, um, kind of enclose that a little What I have right now is a front porch, kind of includes that to make a nicer entrance way to the front of the house. And then in the back um, where the existing deck is, make that into a sunroom and then build a new deck next to it. Um, I have my elderly mother living with me, and I think it would be nice for her to be able for me to be able to wheel her out into the sunroom so she can appreciate, you know, the backyard a little bit, especially in inclement weather. And um, so I'd like your approval for the, um, the renovations. And I think uh, Dave Rosen will go into that a little bit more detail. Mr. Rosen, uh, Amanda, do we need to swear him in as a professional? Uh, we just need to qualify him. So Mr. Qualifying. Rosen, if you could just give us your background. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an architect um, uh, partner in the firm of Rosen Kelly Conway in Summit, 16 Maple Street in Summit. Um, I have, uh, 
I graduated from Syracuse uh, University School of Architecture in 1980, was licensed in 83, started the firm in 86, and have appeared before many boards, including this one, um, many surrounding ones, Chatham Township, Chatham Borough Summit, uh, Milburn, Sum uh, uh, Maplewood, um, Mountainside, et cetera. And your license is in good standing, correct? Yes, it is. Thank you. We'll accept. <laughs> Okay, um, would it be uh, possible for me to screen share and then I can move quickly through the... Uh... Absolutely. Okay. You should have permission. If not, I will regrant it. Uh, I don't, I didn't have it just then. You can try again. Okay, it says uh, the host disabled. No, you should be good. All participants can share. Try again. Okay, great. Um, Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going, I just have uh, three things to share here. Um, the first is two photo boards so that you have an idea of what we're talking about. Uh, the house, this is the house as it is. Uh, the photo was taken. Rosen, were these previously submitted to the board? Yes. I thought I saw them, yeah, okay. Yeah, everything that were... I'm going to show you, you have. Okay, and these were taken by Ms. Chang on October 27, 2020. Correct. And they constitute an accurate depiction of the property as it currently exists? Yes, that's right. Thank you. Okay. So this is the front of the house. It is a one-story, uh, it's a one-story home. Uh, the picture on the right over here uh, shows the existing front entrance with the stairs coming to the side and the walkway coming off to the side to join the driveway. Our intention is, <clears throat> excuse me, is to just extend this a little bit toward the front in order to have with the view straight in to be able to see the front entrance. That's the first variance, which is a front yard setback. The existing house is 50 feet, uh, 50.1, and the required is 50 feet. So as we come a little bit forward from there, the front of the portico, and I'll show you that in just a second, is uh, 47.68 feet, but the bulk of the house is still back at the 50 foot setback. Um, <clears throat> then we have three other variances which all have to do with coverage. And the main issue here really is that this is in the R15 zone, which assumes, an allot si assumes a lot size of 15,000 square feet. This lot is 12,000 square feet. So all of those aspects of zoning that are related to the percentages are more likely to be over. And as a one-story house, uh, it takes up more ground space than if, for example, all of the bedroom wing over here, if that was on top of the house. So the, the three variances that we have are for building coverage, other coverage, and then the combined coverage. And I'll just go through these very quickly with you. Um, the first one, building coverage, is allowed to be 15%. Currently it's 14.2 and it's going up to 15.8. So it's a 0.8% um, variance, I mean, over the, over the allowable. Second is other coverage, um, which is allowed to be 10%. It's currently right near that, it's 10.2. And we would increase that to 11.3. So there's a total uh, variance of 1.3%. The combined coverage then is, uh, is allowed to be 25%. It's currently 24.4 and it's going to 27.1, which puts it 2.1% over the uh, over the usual limit. Now, if this lot was conforming, and I know this is just a mathematical uh, calculation, it's, it's not that relevant, but if it was a 15,000 square foot lot, none of those coverage variances would be needed um, because the numbers would be, building coverage would be 12.6, other would be nine. So both of those would be conforming and the combined would be 21.7. And I know that that's not, I just point that out 
just to illustrate that it's not so much that the house is too big, it's really that the property is undersized for this zone and it causes us to be just on, on the variance side of those statistics. So as I mentioned, this is the house, the entrance, another view, and you can see that the property is pretty flat. Uh, the environmental um, comments were that the property slope is about 0% to 3%, meaning that it's flat. And there's a slight dip in the back corner. Uh, just showing on the driveway side, there's just a path coming around. And then the view of the back of the house. And I assume that you can see all of these. If anybody has a question, just, just let me know. Uh, and there's an existing deck here. That is where this one story uh, single room sunroom goes and then we'll put a similar size deck just over on this on this side not a big deck um, the the new deck will be 12 feet by 12 and a half feet so a total of 150 square feet so it's a relatively small um, structure and the sunroom is very similar in size it's 13 by uh, 12 and a half um, <clears throat> So let me just move to the second photo board. And let me just, uh, just a quick explanation. Um, and again, you have this. This is the street. This is Chaucer Drive. This is uh, Elfie Wegner's property. And behind here is a small stream and about six properties up. So one, two, three, and up a little bit uh, to the upper part of this screen is the Passaic River. And so there's a buffer to the back. We're also fine on rear, rear yard setback and so on, but there's the stream in the back here. Uh, we are not adversely impacting that. And the photo, again, this is Chaucer Drive. The stream is over here in these woods. And this is the house. Um, I'm just going to expand that slightly just so you can perhaps see it just a little bit better. Um, when we look at this, you can see that this is one of the most original versions of the houses in this neighborhood. Um, so this house, even in this aerial view is, uh, and this is off of Google Maps, is much smaller than say the house next door, which has a similar, but perhaps even slightly larger footprint and is two stories and has a large pool and deck in the back. Uh, and, and the same width driveway as uh, the Wegner's property. Uh, other houses in the neighborhood have also been improved and some of them quite nicely, uh, but they have big, some of them are taller uh, and so on. Okay. Yes. How do I... So just check out in the Where? left, top left, up in the corner. Okay, then the next thing I just wanted to point out is those statistics that I just mentioned. And this is in the, narrative which we submitted um, that was that was produced uh, by my office um, that we wrote. And these are those numbers again. Uh, the allowable is here, 50 feet. The proposed, I mentioned the 47.68 and that variance of two, two feet and a few inches. And the building coverage, again, 15%, we're going to be at 15.8, so we're 0.8% over. The other coverage is allowed to be eight, uh, sorry, 10. We're at 11 and change, and so it's 1.3. And then the 25%, and we are 2.1% over, okay? And then uh, the last thing I just wanted to show um, is among the things that you have are the drawings. And this is just showing V, on drawing V4, um, which shows the front of the house as it is, and as it will be, no change to the sides, no change to the silhouette of the house. <clears throat> We're doing a variety of other improvements, new windows um, and this portico and some minor changes inside as well. And then the other view that I just wanted to show you is at the back of the house. Again, this is the current back of the house with the deck and in the place of the deck, we're putting this one story sunroom, not visible from the front, barely visible from the neighbors, and then a small deck on this side, and then just a landing and stairs down. And as Elfie mentioned, this, this room will be nice 
uh, for her mother to be able to come out here and also flush with that is this, this new little deck. So I will stop there for a moment and just answer any questions. Perfect, we'll open it up to the members of the board uh, with any questions. Joe? I'm good. Mr. Dalia? Nothing. John? It looks good. Jerry? Uh, Mr. Rosen, yeah, yeah. I, I have one question. The sunroom and the master bedroom, they're essentially the same size, I, I believe, right? They're 12 by 13 or 12 by 12? Uh, that's that's right. They're they're a similar okay. size, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. That, that's more coincidence, but it's proportional. The, the addition is not an enormous room. It's proportional for the size of the other rooms okay. in the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosen. When we look at the sunroom, I you know I, again I think traditional sunroom, full windows all the way around. This is uh, is this going to be a three season room, four season room, heating? What is the the plan, Elfie, you want to unmute? Sure. My unmute. No, it's going to be more like a three season room, no heat, just able to go out, you know, maybe have a little breakfast in the morning in the summer, spring, fall. And then, you know, in the winter, you know, obviously it'll be like a, another refrigerator um, to keep things, but it's more, more of a, I guess, more of a three season room than a sunroom. Okay. And Ms. Rosen, all sides of the house will match after the construction is finished, all sides, colors? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, the, the, the intent here is to really do something that looks like it could have been original on the house, even though it's, I think it may turn out to be a little nicer. But once we change the other windows, some of the windows on the house, I think that it'll all blend in very nicely. Yes. Excellent. Um, Maybe we should open up to members of the public for question or comment. Can I get a motion to open up to members of the public? So moved. And a second? I'll second. We got a motion by Mr. Ringwood and a second by Mr. Sylvester. The meeting is now open to members of the public. If you would like to speak on this application, please virtually or physically raise your hand and we will bring you off mute. Mr. Leister. I'm Richard Leister from the Environmental Commission. I'm wondering what uh, the applicant is going to do to try to uh, retain stormwater on the property. Well, we have a, we have um, about two years ago, I put in a like French drain on each side of the house. So the sump pump that was originally pumping water directly in front of the backyard. Uh, we kind of uh, rerouted to the sides and even the storm waters from the gutters, they all come down and get channeled into these um, like French drains, these pipes, and then gradually um, disseminate to the back. You know, there's rock. So we took care of that uh, two years ago. Just to clarify, the water comes down or the water from the sump pump gets, gets sent to the outside and underground now, there are there is gravel and perforated pipes so that that storm water is not just running across the surface of the backyard, but is, is sort of held within the ground for longer and uh, dissipates that way. Is that correct, Elfie? Yes, correct. Thank you for clarifying. Mr. Leister, any other questions for the applicant? So the, because the total amount of impervious surface exceeds the maximum amount, what are you going to do about that? Would the applicant stipulate to a stormwater management plan uh, based on review of our township engineer? Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, Alfie, go ahead. I don't understand, can you, uh, can you answer that? Um, I, I, what he's what he's asking is if the municipal engineer requires additional stormwater management mm -hmm. um, to accommodate the expansion of coverage, mm -hmm. would we be willing to do that? Um, and and I think the answer is yes. Is that right? Yes. The the issue though, uh, Mr. Leister, is that since it's so close to the stream. Um, 
one of the conventional approaches of doing a, uh, a dry well, a six foot diameter reinforced concrete um, dry well, either empty or with large gravel and sending the water into there, that may not work as well just because the water table is quite high in this area near the stream and about six properties away from the Passaic River. So it may be more of a horizontal system, but the simple answer to your question is yes, we will be, we will, we will coordinate with the engineer and uh, whatever solution is needed, that'll be done. Fantastic, thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Leister? Um, more of a comment. I mean, just to make people in general aware, there's new stormwater management regulations from the state which require green infrastructure. And of course, a dry well is a form of green infrastructure, but there are other options uh, which uh, residents can use, including rain gardens. It, I realize that you're in a difficult situation, but we as the Environmental Commission, uh, you know, whenever we see any property exceeding the maximum uh, uh, permitted, we really, that uh, immediately raises a flag for us to say, you need to try to retain stormwater on your property. Um, I think that there are two components to that. One is what's required. The other one is uh, recommended. I thought you had an excellent list of some of the recommendations, including rain gardens and various other um, suggestions. And uh, we found that very helpful. Um, obviously planting with native plants, we do not have a steep slope. So the water does not run off. So, so long as we can contain it on site, it may consist of changing the contours of the property a little bit so that there's a perhaps a small berm just to keep the water from sheet flow sort of across the backyard and into the stream. Uh, the plant, the native plants, the rain garden, similar kinds of things. I thought that that was an excellent list that you provided and we will be glad to uh, consider those and in coordination with the municipal engineer. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak, uh, comment or question on behalf of this application? At this time, seeing no one, I'll ask for a motion to close to members of the public. A motion to close. I have a motion by Mr. D'Elia, a second? A second, Mike. A second by Mr. Nappy. Mm -hmm. We are now closed to members of the public. Any further comments or questions from the board? Um, Mr. Sylvester? Any further comments or questions? Mr. Nappy? I'm good. Mr. Thank Henwood? You. I'm good. Would you like to make a motion for approval or denial? I move that we approve. Subject to all the conditions. I'll I'm sorry. I'll second approve. I'll Amanda? Second. Subject, sorry. Subject to all of the conditions set forth on the record, including the stormwater management. And I think that was actually it. Oh, substantially similar exterior to the existing exterior. That matches, right? Yes. So roll call. We have a motion for approval by Mr. Ringwood and a second by? Up, second. A second by Mr. Sylvester. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Coviello? Yes. Mr. D'Elia? Yes. Mr. Nappy? Yes. Mr. Ringwood? Yes. Mr. Sylvester? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. And good luck on your project. Good um, luck. Amanda, will, resolutions will be ready. Likely by the next meeting, but I don't think that's till towards the end of the month, right? Next month. So your resolution is probably by the end of June. We got it. Thank okay. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your time. You're yeah. welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. We will move on to the second application, 356 Timber. And for the record, I did review the notice and it was appropriate as to form and content. Fantastic. And pronunciation of your last name? Sure thing, it's Scorzafava. Hi there, I'm and Tina, Tina Scorzafava. Do you have any professionals joining you this evening? Yes, I do, we have several. We have Bob Hessels from RDH Design Group, 
Jacek Durka and Andrew Pobresniak from AP Architect, and Steve Patresiak from Canstruck Group. Just wanna make sure we have them all unmuted. Yes. Could we go through that list one more time? Sure thing. Uh, Bob Hessel, I see Bob Hessel here, Bob Hessel. and Andrew. Yes, and uh, Steve uh, from Canstruck Group. I see Steve there, I think. Okay, uh, your team has the ability to speak. Thank and you. I will swear everybody in. If you could all raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. yes. I do. Perfect. Thank you. So just a brief introduction to myself and my husband. I'm Tina Scorzafava. This is my husband, Todd Scorzafava. We're the homeowners and applicants for Project Application 9-21, located at 356 Timber Drive. Thank you all for meeting with us today to discuss our project. Our goals are to improve our home, specifically the front portico, uh, interior, uh, sorry, uh, the second story addition over a portion of the first story, a new cover front portico, a new covered patio, new open air patio rear and front yards, a one story addition to the rear, a, rear roof, a new roof over the existing garage, a removal of existing patio and interior reservation, um, renovations. Uh, just a little background on our family. We had decided to establish roots in the Berkeley Heights community in 2013, and we've really enjoyed being an active part of the community since. Uh, I've already introduced our team, and for tonight, we're gonna start off with Bob Hessels from RDH Design Group to review the zoning variances requested and introduce his associate, Brian, if he's there, also working on our project. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, I'm Bob Hessels. If you guys can, can you, oh, you did unmute, Brian. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, I am, uh, I am um, the owner of RDH Design Group. I'm a licensed landscape architect, architect and licensed planner in the state of New Jersey. I uh, graduated from Rutgers University. Um, in 1987 with a degree in environmental planning and design and landscape architecture. Um, I started RDH Design Group in 97. I received my, light, my landscape architecture license in 95 and my license for planning in 2005. Both licenses are in good standing. Um, I've testified um, several boards, this board a while ago, um, but a lot around the Chatham Borough, Chatham Township, Summit, uh, New Providence, uh, Livingston, Madison, uh, so all within the surrounding area. And we are testimony tonight at the Professional B for both architecture or landscape architecture and planning. I'm basically going to be testifying on planning part. I'm going to introduce the um, just basically the uh, the applications, uh, the the variances that the applicant is looking for, and uh, then we're going to turn it over to the architect to speak on his behalf, and then we'll go over to engineering. Okay. All right. Um, if you could just let me share, I guess I could share the screen, correct? You should be able to. All right. I'm just going to go. I sent, um, well, I guess this will come up later, but we'll deal with that later. Uh, so just to review the chart, um, they are, uh, the scores of Favas are in an R15 zone, um, just like the last applicant. Uh, 15,000 square feet of lot area is required. They, their lot is... Uh, 26,610. Um, they are currently looking for four variances, um, two of which are pre-existing conditions and um, and two of which are not. Uh, the two that are pre-existing are the, the side yard setback combined principal structure. Uh, currently the required combined is 30 feet uh, existing is 29.06 and their proposed is going to remain the same uh, so it's roughly a one foot uh, variance request on the, the combined setbacks the front setback um, required is 50 feet the survey actually the survey shows 43.33 feet on the survey itself um, but the but that is that's incorrect and the the proposed actually is 43.39 feet so it's 0 0.06 off 
Um, and then that's that footprint is going to stay exactly the same and the architects will attest to that after uh, me and uh, and then in regards to the two other variances uh, which seem to be a, uh, a popular variance uh, in this area is the maximum building coverage and also the uh, I'm sorry not maximum building coverage maximum lot coverage and the other coverage uh, currently, the lot is sits at 20.45%. Um, required is 25%. They're looking to increase uh, that with their the pool project and uh, patio that they'd like to do in the backyard. Uh, and it will increase it to 30.1%. Uh, so it's a 5.1% increase. And in regards to the other coverage, um, the, their current existing is slightly over by half a percent. And uh, we're looking to increase that to 17.55%. Uh, so we're asking for a 7% increase on the other, which the, obviously the accessory structures, um, again, being the pool, the pool patio, spa. Um, so the usable areas in the backyard um, that they would like to, like to improve and use more of their property. Um, so those are the four variants that we'll be looking for. Uh, are there any questions? questions or or concerns on on what I just what I just stated or are we okay good not at this time okay um yeah so again I, I just uh, I stated those four I'm going to pass it over uh to the architect at this point and allow him to talk about the improvements to the house and uh what they're looking to do uh with that and then we'll we'll turn over to the engineering and talk further about the grading and drainage and pool project in the rear yard. So, uh, Andrew, um, if you guys can pick up, it's, it's, you're up. I'll turn this off. Mr. Chair, do you want to do questions for each witness separately, or do you want to just do it at the end? You could do, why don't we do per, per witness? Okay. So then we so can open it to the public. Can I get a motion to open this to members of the public? For I'll questions? move. We have a motion by Mr. Nappy. Right. And I'll a second, second by Mr. Delia. This application is now open to members of the public specifically to make comments or questions on the testimony just provided. If just anybody questions. Has, just questions. If there are any questions for the professional that was just talking, please raise your hand virtually or physically and we will give you the uh, permission to speak. Seeing no one, we will look for a motion to close to members of the public. So okay. moved. Motion by Mr. Ringwood and a second by Mr. Delia. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Tessel, who was uh, speaking next? Uh, Andrew will be speaking next, the architect. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, my name is Andrew Podvoreznik. I'm the architect on this project. Uh, and I would like to basically explain the, well, first of all, um, I'm a licensed architect, state of New Jersey. I graduated school of architecture at NGIT in 1985. In 1987, I have my license and on my own, in my own practice for the last 20 years, I testified before municipal, before multiple, multiple planning boards and variance boards, including Berkeley Heights in the past. And what is your business uh, my address? License, in my business on 11 High Point Drive, Springfield, New Jersey. Thank you. So I'll, I'll be going through the, the house portion of the project. So if I can, I would like to put a, on a screen the existing house right now so I can explain what we have present time. You have permission for sharing. So at present time, this is a single family house, split level type uh, in R15 R zone. As you can see, the property slide sloping slightly from the right side to the left side uh, with the house with the lower, uh, the lower level is on the right hand side, the, multi, the two story is in the middle. And then we have a setback, uh, two, two car garage with the flat roof, okay. Um, is this uh, the photograph that the board already has or no? No, it doesn't. Okay, so let's mark this as exhibit A1. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And did um, you take the photograph? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Continue. I'm sorry. Um, one of the one of the projects that we're planning to do on this, as you can see, the entrance right now we have a portico in the front, but it's a side entrance. Mm -hmm. And what we're planning to do is basically turn around and have a front entrance to, to, into that portico. We're not changing the size at all. We're just changing location of the steps from the side to the front and creating new sidewalk into this driveway. So that will be the outside portion of the front yard itself. If we go to the, let's go to this, to the first, uh, the upper level floor plan. And, and um, you can see the portico. Basically, we, uh, we have, we're creating two columns. We're creating the front. Steps you didn't change the, the photo, just we're still looking at these the same photo. Oh, one second, we're changing right now. Is it better now? I still see the same photo front of him. You still see the existing front elevation. Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing, I'm going through the floor plans already. Do you have two screens? Sometimes that throws it off. No, just one. No. Maybe if you close just it and then one second. There you go. See it now? Yes. And these are the okay. same plans that were submitted with the application? Yes, there, there are. Thank you. So this is the upper level of the of the ex, of the house with the addition proposed. As you can see, we have the front portico in the front, and is we basically remove this removing the side steps and, and putting a new steps in the front, creating it's the same size portico, same roof over portico, except the entrance is from the side to the front. Emphas of emphasizing a little bit the the, the, the entry door. Uh, as far as a on a on a on a floor plan, what we're doing is we're basically re, uh, relocating the existing master bedroom over existing den that is in the rear, uh, creating two walk-in closets, a larger or la larger bathroom with shower top, uh, double vanity, and a toilet, creating laundry room on that level also, and a couple walk-in closets. On the right-hand side, uh, we are creating. Uh, creating roof patio, which is roughly 24 by 36, open to three sides uh, with cathedral ceilings and some skylights in it. And, and that would have a, the outdoor kitchen um, to basically enjoy. Uh, also what we're doing is on the left-hand side, if you can see with the existing garages, the existing garage is kind of funny shape. The left side, instead of having 90 degrees towards the front is a little bit on the angle. We squaring that away and creating pitch roof over it, so it kind of fits into the fits into the house and into the neighborhood with the pitch roof, because right now it has a flat roof. So that's the that's the additions on the upper level. Uh, if we go to the lower level now, you have the lower level, correct? Okay, on the, on the lower level, basically what we're creating is we're creating a bathroom bathroom. We creating a mudroom that would basically have an entrance from the low patio into the lower den. And we taking a little portion of existing uh, garage and creating a study in the back. And if you see there, there was a couple of piers. So we squaring over the garage because the garage is very, very funny at shape. Uh, those are basically the, the, this is the extent of the additions on the house. Uh, if we can go to the front elevation, maybe I can explain and I can show exactly what we're doing. This is basically redoing the front portico, creating again front entrance, emphasizing the entrance into the house, creating couple peaks, especially one peak over the the two story section of the split level, creating a pitch roof, the peak over the garages, so it kind of fits more into the neighborhood instead of having flat roof. Uh, okay, and then in the on the side of it, you can see the garages. You can see the portico, and in the rear, you can see the the the, the rear uh, roof patio with a couple of skylights on the left hand side. 
uh, as far as the variances that have to do with the with the building itself, uh, basically we have a two variances, which is combined side yard variance. There is a 30 feet required, but if you go to a site plan, if you remember the site plan from the engineer when the engineer was testifying, the property is a it's a very nice size, 26,000 square foot, but it's a pie shape. So as we go further back, it opens up, but front corners, uh, we were supposed to have a combined front yard setback of side yard setback of 30 feet. We are at 29.06. And this is existing, non-confirming. We're not changing anything. It's just, that's how it is. All my adults are, they, they do not affect any kind of setbacks. Uh, the front yard setback is 50 feet required. We are at 43.9 existing. And we're keeping at 43.9, except we're making the entry instead of from being side entrance to the portico, we're making the front entry to the portico. Uh, and those are the, the, the only two variances that have to do with the building. And that's, that's it. If you, have, if you have any questions, I can answer them. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board members? If not, can we get a motion to open to members of the public? I make a motion to open to the public. A motion by Mr. Sylvester and a second. Second. And a second by Mr. Ringwood. We are now open to members of the public for this application. Specific. Mr. Leister. I'm not sure I'm talking too soon. I'm uh, just wondering what the architect is planning to do in response to the recommendations of the Environmental Commission. Uh, specifically downspout and, uh, and stormwater retention. Uh, well, we will have right after me, we will have an engineer uh, testifying to this. Uh, and then he, he will go into a lot more detail about the stormwater. Okay. Thanks. Are there any other questions? To this professional. Seeing no members of the public, can I get a motion to close? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Dalia and a second. Second. Second by Mr. Ringwood. And Mr. Hessel, I'm going to bring you off mute if you could introduce the third professional for the evening. Uh, at this point, um, I'm going to have my, uh, my associate, Brian Horley. Uh, who's a PE, and he's going to speak on behalf of uh, the grading and drainage uh, for the property and how that's going to be handled. Mr. Horley, can we just qualify him real quick? Uh, how are you doing? I'm Brian Horley. A um, little bit of background. I, uh, I graduated from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in, uh, in 91 with an engineering degree, um, in 94 with an MBA, uh, and I received my professional license from the state of New Jersey in 2002. Um, I've been practicing for, for 20 years as a professional engineer and my license is in good standing with the state. And you're at RDH as well, right? I am at RDH, correct. So same address of 14 Blackwell Avenue. Correct. Perfect, thank you. All right, so Bob, can you bring up the, uh, the plan? I'll yeah, I'll pop it up. I'll zoom it out a little bit for you. Might be too small. Is that good? That's good. Okay. So based on the proposals um, for the current design, we were proposing to install a, a drywall system that was sized appropriately for all the uh, improved and impervious coverage that was being added. Um, the, uh, the sloping of the property and the grading of the property was all um, going to stay pretty close to where it is now, um, but it is in, in designed with intent to not impact surrounding properties, uh, not have a, uh, an impact on any properties in the area. Um, the dry well is sized appropriately for the additional coverage uh, yeah. with a, uh, a, a surplus availability of uh, 18 cubic feet. Um, in response to the Environmental Commission's request, um, we can certainly take a look at uh, some of the green measures uh, that were in the letter, uh, but the design that's in front of you was, uh, was prior to this letter. And will the applicant stipulate to having the stormwater review, stormwater management system reviewed by our township engineer? Absolutely. Yes. Perfect. Thank I want you. to work with everyone. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Horley, is there any more testimony from your side? Uh, from my side, the, the, the other piece is in, in response to the, uh, the downspouts and sump pumps. Uh, we can certainly redirect those um, into the stormwater management system uh, as opposed to where they are discharging to today as part of the reviewed plan with the township. Very good. We will once again uh, look for a motion to open to members of the public for. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Ringwood and a second. I'll second. I'll second. Second by Mr. Nappy. We are now open to members of the public. Please virtually or physically raise your hand and we will give you the opportunity to speak. Seeing no one, I will look for a motion to close to members of the public. I make a motion to close to the public. Motion by Mr. Sylvester and a second. I'll second. Second by Mr. Delia. We are now closed to members of the public. Mr. Hessel. Um, as far as our, our testimony and presentation at this point, um, we'd like to open it up to the board for questions and comments. Great, we'll start uh, Mr. Ringwood. I'm good for right now. Mr. Nappy. No, I'm good also. Mr. Delia. Nothing. Mr. Sylvester. No, I'm good. Very good. Um, we assume that all sides will match colors on the new edition. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> Are there any trees being removed? Actually, yeah. say that again. Any Talk trees? There was a survey done um, prior and uh, we have approval to remove a tree, uh, one tree in the back. Um, where it is rotting. And so and you've obtained a, the permits, necessary permits for that yeah. tree. Great. Depending on the depending on the pool, there could be obviously more trees, but whatever is needed or required will be replaced. So any tree removal, you'll take necessary steps to file for the appropriate permits. Absolutely. Yep. I have uh, no questions about this application. It's pretty straightforward. And we'll have a conforming pool fence, correct? With the self-closing latch, perfect. Is any landscaping proposed? Not at this time. Um, okay. We wanted to make sure that uh, whatever environmental regulations we would conform to and kind of go with the design of that. Perfect. Hey, Mike, along with the pool fencing, how about the light over still? Any lighting oh. around the pool? There's not, lighting. Not, not lights in the pool, but around the pool. Uh, there, there will be lighting around the pool, um, around the patio area. And will it be LED low lighting or which is just ground cast? So there's no spillage. Will you stipulate no spillage of lighting to neighbor's property? Yes. Right, right. Let's see. Very good. Any other questions or comments from the board? None. Amanda, do we need to open it up to members of the public one more time or? Let's do it for, yeah, just any comments if there's anyone. Can we get a motion to open the members of the public? I'll make a motion. We got a motion by Mr. Delia and a second. Second. By Mr. Ringwood. The meeting is now open to members of the public. If anybody would like to speak on behalf of this application, please virtually or physically raise your hand. Seeing no one, we will close to members of the public. Can I get a motion to close to the members of the public? So moved. We got a motion by Mr. Ringwood and a second by Mr. Second. Nappy. Meeting is now closed to members of the public. Can we get an, a motion for approval or denial with uh, based on all stipulations required and testimony provided? I will move to approve, Mike. We have a, mo a motion for approval by Mr. Nappy, a second. I second. A second mm -hmm. by Mr. Sylvester. Roll call. Mr. Cobiello. Yes. Mr. Delia? Yes. Mr. Nappy? Yes. Mr. Ringwood? Yes. Mr. Sylvester? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Good luck, congratulations on your project. As uh, further stated in the last application, uh, your resolution should be ready at our next meeting in June. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.
Regina, are you okay? Yes, I was knocked out a little bit earlier, but I got back in. But I don't know what happened. Power surge or something. Does any need, anybody need a break before we continue? If not, we'll push forward for the next few applications and move on. Everybody else is good? Yep. Okay, our application uh, for Wachung Boulevard uh, carried from April 29th, application 7-21. For the record, the notice is still good because we did carry it from the last meeting. Okay. And is it uh, Bussin? Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Awesome. Bussin, do you have any professionals with you this evening that will be testifying on your behalf? No, unfortunately, we were unable to secure them for, for this date. So we will be uh, talking on behalf of ourselves. If we need to discuss any uh, any follow up with them after the meeting, we will do so. Fantastic. Can you just swear you in. If you could just raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, we do. I do. Thank you. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about your application and what it brings you here this evening? Yep. So, we're here to talk about application number ZA21124. Um, my name is David Bussin. This is my wife, Liliana Bussin. Uh, we are talking about our proposal to install a, uh, an in-ground pool in the backyard of our property. Um, it has been a, a lifelong dream of ours to, to have a pool personally and, and one for our family. Those that have a pool can probably attest for that as well. But I do understand that there are, uh, there are some challenges that we need to overcome. Um, we were aware of a, of a notice that was sent um, by the county um, that we definitely need to discuss as well. And uh, as we just heard in the, in, in the last presentation, we are open to conforming to what we need to do to get this done and understand uh, what that's going to take. Okay, fantastic. So, I mean, taking a look at your application, uh, reviewing the letter from the county, as you can see, we're up against a, a few challenges based on prior permits that were done in previous work. Mm -hmm. So one right. of the things that we've got to talk about is, is the fence that is currently um, showing on your neighbor's and county property. And then there is a, a patio. Is that existing patio, proposed patio? That is an existing, existing. that's an existing paver patio uh, with a non-glued fire pit that can be moved. And is um, that, that is your patio? Correct. Okay. Uh, I mean, so just simply put, some of the things to rectify immediately would be to, as you, if, as you read the county letter, we'd have to make sure the fence is then relocated back to your property, uh, both across the back border and your side off, off of the neighbors. Uh, we would have to make sure that that patio was either, well, it had to be deconstructed because it would have to be removed from the neighbor's property. Uh, some of the concerns from the county are simply in the letter making sure that dumping doesn't happen on their property, uh, that the staging of equipment doesn't happen on their property, that, it, that, the, that the land remains in its natural state as intended. Of course. Correct. So uh, just to get started, you would stipulate to changing the things that are there now to bring it back into conformity as it should be before you kind of start the project. That's correct. Yes, correct. That's correct. And do you have the actual footage to the, I, I didn't notice in the, in the county letter that there was an exact footage. There was a range between eight to 20 feet. And if I actually look back by that fence, which was actually constructed to align with a, with a previously installed fence, they said it was eight to 20 feet. It looks to me like it's about six feet. Do you have an actual, um, I, I don't, and you'll probably have to hire a professional to come out and do it. Uh, somebody was looking at your plot plan, took a ruler that did their best guess estimate to get it because it does slope across the back. It it's not straight across. So they're probably giving a range of, of yeah. sizes. So you'd, you'd have to have somebody come out, survey the land property, uh, mark it where it should be, and then relocate the fence properly. So it looks like you guys uh, applied for a permit, put in a fence based on a pre-existing fence, which was probably done in the wrong spot. So again, hire a surveyor to come out, look at the land, they'll okay. give you, they can mark it where the fence should be, and then you would put it there. And I believe, uh, again, as I look at the letter, it may need to be, again, one foot with inside the property line as, you, as your border. But again, look at the Union County letter, hire a professional to come out, and they can guide you uh, to the actual property line. So again, you know, getting the fence right and the patio right to start are the two biggest things. And then we can kind of talk through your application a little bit further. So I'll open it up to members of the board to talk through 
the existing application outside of some of the challenges that we just discussed. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dalia, any questions, comments, discussions around this application? Um, just the, uh, so we're on the same page. You, you agree to rectify the fence and the patio issue before you start the project, is that correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Is also, there a time, uh, Mr. Delia? is there a time where that is required to be done before we start the project or can it be done in tandem? Start the project, get that done as the project gets started. Is there, does there need to be a time in between where there well, is a... Uh, not, not so much a time. What, what my concern is, is have you contacted a, a pool company to, to do the project? Correct. Yes. Did they specify where they would put the excess dirt once you start excavating for the pool? Because it, the inside of your property, it doesn't look like there's a real lot of space there. Um, would they truck that excess material out or they would have enough room inside the property line to, to stockpile it? I would have to follow up with them as a next step. I believe they would be able to truck that out. It's easy to go back and forth through the fence that's already there up to the driveway. So if that's, um, if that's requested and required by the board, we can certainly conform to that. Okay, that would be my and only- We have access for them to go in and out big enough, wide enough to be able to go in. Okay, that, that would be my only concern. And there was a photo that was submitted to the board of the barn door opening for the fence that they mm -hmm. would be able to go back and forth from. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sylvester. I'm good. Mr. Nappy. Did we lose Mr. Nappy? I think we lost Mr. Nappy for a moment. So Mr. Ringwood. I'm good for now. So folks, as we, as we kind of take a look. Um, well, we need Mr. Nappy. He, is, he may have been transferring from outside to inside and oh god connection. gotcha let's just give him a minute or two just in case absolutely While we're waiting, I actually have a question for the board. Um, given that we're zoned in R20, I'm told that uh, it's required to have a minimum of 20,000 square feet. And in the, the last survey that we had, we are at 18,000 square feet. So I know that there's, there was some feedback around the coverage that we are proposing. So I just wanted to understand if there was any clarity that can be driven regarding what, what zone we are in and the size of our plot regards to the, the minimum that's required. There seems to be a little bit of a, a discrepancy. Just because you're in a, in a, in a zone um, that has a minimum requirement doesn't always mean the minimum requirement is there. So for example, you have an undersized lot today. It is a pre-existing non-conforming. You know, so that's, we're not gonna say you can't live there because the lot is smaller than it should be. Um, but those are the things that the board does take into account when we look at the application and coverage and percentages as in the very first one, um, you know, their lot was a certain size. If it met the size requirement, they would have been a different, different number. So those are all yeah. things that the board takes a look at. Fair enough, thank you. And Miss Amanda, uh, Jerry is not in yet. Um, let me just see if I can give him a call, hold on. Yeah. 
Okay, so I got um, I got his voicemail. Oh. So. And just for the benefit of the public and the applicant, normally we would have seven members, but today we have two that are absent. So we only have five. So you would need to get a majority of the members that are present, but right now, Mr. Nappy wouldn't be able to vote unless he hears all the testimony. So that would bring you guys down to four. And that's a little bit harder to get a majority of, but. A moving target for us. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? <laughs> and, and we may take um, a straw poll from the board prior to vote to see how things are looking at at the application, looking at the layout and the plan, uh, with a lot of the changes that need to be made. Stuff that Mr. Glee had brought up that the property from where your pool and spa is currently located on the on the plan uh, had the fence that is you know there now been the original property line, you would have had a decent amount of distance. Bring being the fact that the fence line is in quite a distance, uh, some of those setbacks are at seven feet and would meet the requirements, and we probably have to move. So you may need to work with your professional, again, on making sure you obtain uh, a, a proper plot plan, because uh, it appears that the existing boundary information was taken from a survey prepared in 2015, which may be incorrect if the fence line is going off that plot plan. So you, you may want to work with a surveyor, get that set so you have your boundaries marked properly. So then this way, the pool company can set up the design within the proper boundaries. And if you did that, then the board could take a look at uh, at the layout as it would be or will be, not as it m might be. Because right now we're, we'd be talking about moving things around and it would be a lot of adjustment without any visuals. So Understood. what we could do is talk through some of the things the board would look for this evening, if you'd like, giving you some guidance on how to proceed forward. Okay. That would be preferred, yes. So, I mean, I'll start for myself and then we can move around the board as, as we talked, it would be again, getting just to make sure the survey's up to date, um, showing where your fence is and then will be, uh, showing that the patio that's currently there that is uh, bordering both your neighbors and your property, uh, what you plan to do with that, because again, that also is, is showing coverage, right? Because you, and it's actually not being calculated coverage because it's not on your property. So if, if you moved it onto your property, that'd be further calculated coverage. Uh, so you have to take some of those things into into account. And then again, um, the setbacks for some of these things like the spa right now is about seven foot off the property line. You're, you're going to be probably trying to get it to 10, 12 feet off the property line. Uh, as, as Mr. Galea mentioned, you know, making sure that you'll show where the silt fence is. They've already kind of got an outline on here where the silt fence is. And that's really for where they're going to hold back debris when the construction is being done, because the county is going to be very sensitive to making sure that debris uh, during the construction, say if it rains, doesn't wash off onto their land. Mm -hmm. So again, having that proper plan in advance will allow you to present the full application. Uh, again, looking at it as is, it's a very nice addition to your home. But I think some, those are some of the steps that you're gonna need to take. And I'll, I'll leave it open to some of the board members here to kind of give their advice and feedback on what they'd be looking for so you can prepare for the next go. Uh, Mr. Ringwood? I, I would just echo what Mr. Coviello said is that depending on what the what the survey size of your lot is based on, that's going to have an impact on all of your calculations. So it's hard for us to make a decision today, kind of assuming what the right calculations are. Um, so just again, echoing what Mr. Coviello said. And just to bring Mr. Nash up to speed, Jerry, we're gonna um, we're we're just kind of giving advice to the to the applicant. Uh, they're going to go back and do some some more work okay. and, and represent. So we're just kind of giving advice on what we'd like to see as, as they come forward. Okay. Mr. Delia? Yeah, no, I agree uh, that if we could see exactly what we're, you know, voting to approve, uh, that would be a big help. Mr. Sylvester, any, any questions, comments, as is? No, Mike, uh, every, everything you said sort of presents it properly. Jerry, what we've asked is again, that they go back, uh, do the plot plan to show where the fence is and where it will be. Right. So just so we get a better depiction. And then this way, the pool company will know where the boundaries are and can lay out the project appropriately showing that again, then they'll be able to properly show the layout of a silt fence and where construction debris would be and not be. So that's some of the advice right. we provided. And if okay. I can just interject, I 
think in the past, the board has generally had a policy of trying to keep the coverage below 30%. So maybe you may also want to take a look at if there's anything that you can reduce the coverage on. I know the calculations might change a little bit just because of the property line changing. But if there's anything that you can do to reduce some of the coverage or any stormwater management suggestions that you have, that would be appreciated too. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you received a letter from, from Mr. Leister, so you could take a look at the Environmental Commission's recommendations, see how you can incorporate that in. Uh, Tom Salvaro, our township engineer, is always available for consultation. Uh, he's part-time. He's I think he's Tuesdays and Thursdays still, but you could reach out to him in, in advance of coming back and talking through what he may recommend for the project. So these are things that will help you move quicker as we get to the next step. And who is that? What's that name again? His name is Tom oh, Salfaro. Tom, okay. And then since we're gonna be carrying this, do we have, what's our next meeting date, Regina? June 24th. Okay, so then for members of the public and for the applicants, this matter will be carried to June 24th at the same time, same place. I believe we'll be, still be by Zoom at that point. So we will carry it to then. And then if you have any new plans or anything, please submit them in advance of the hearing. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much very for your time this evening. All right. Board. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to move on to, unless we need a break, if uh, Regina, you're still good. Man is still good. I'm good. And then we are going to move on to application 621, which is also carried from April 29th, 24 Shadow Lane. Give me just one second to clear my desk and get the next set. And for this application, and Mr. Santoro, I believe you're representing the, the applicant, correct? Yes, let me get my volume up. I was keeping it down. I apologize. That's okay. How did your sporting event go this evening? Did you did you come out? Yeah, I coached my little uh, seven year old group and uh, sent them off for ice cream with my brother, but um, they, they had a lot of fun. Thanks for asking. Very good. Very good. Um, uh, applicant, sorry, your the pronunciation of your last name, so I don't mess it up. It's uh, it's Calandrillo. Calandrillo, thank you very much. Are any other professionals with the uh, with you this evening other than Mr. Santori? We should have Mr. Hollows on the meeting. Mr. Hollows is here and is now able to speak. And for the record, I did review the notice and it was appropriate. And then we just carried that to this meeting. So it remains appropriate. And I can swear in our professionals, if you would raise your right hands and our applicant, I'm sorry. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth will help you God? I do. Thank you. And then I, Mr. Santori, you can just qualify Mr. Hollows. Sure, um, Mr. Hollows, can you take us through your CV and um, obviously your experience before this board? I am a licensed professional engineer and land surveyor, planner in the state of New Jersey. I've appeared before this board several times. I think most recently about one or two months ago. Um, and I typically appear summit New Providence, Berkeley Heights, Long Hill Township, Berners Township. And your license is still in good standing, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Mr. Hollis, can you, um, is it, uh, Amanda, is the uh, board accepting as an expert? Yes. We do I today. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of figured. <laughs> I think he underplayed how frequently he appears before the board. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hollis, can you do us a favor? Can you take us through the existing site conditions of Mr. Calandrillo's property at 24 Shadow Lane, please? Sure. If I could share my screen. You should be able to, Mr. Hollis. Uh, the first, you should be able to see a drawing, I hope. Not yet. Uh, if you're working on two screens, you may be sharing the opposite one from the one we're viewing. But right now, it's still just the Brady Bunch picture of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Oh. You still don't see it? Nope. I see it really well. <laughs> now? No, sir. No. I don't, let, let me see if I can get my, my uh, IT person here. <sighs> Need you.
And while we're working on that, these are the same plans I imagine that were submitted with the application. Yes, we do have one minor variation that we want to discuss and whether the board will deem it appropriate to hear. Mr. Hollis will walk us through that and it deals with a um, potential additional pad paper patio area that we'd like to put that increases the impervious somewhat. He has the calculations for that, but um, for the, I mean, we can just kind of, I, I could finish that thought in theory. When Mr. Hollows had gotten to me on it and took a look at it and he said, oh, he said, you know, he asked me if I had noticed already. And I said, well, you know, we're right at the, right at the crux of the, the 10 days. I can't really do much. He's like, well, I noticed that we really should, we have the deck over there at small area, but we, um, we really need to put it like a paper patio down. So we ran some calculations and he, he can walk you through some of that. And um, we hope that the board's willing to entertain it because it would be of assistance instead of putting a, when I say deck, we really don't have a deck, but he'll go through it. It's more of a landing. And Mr. Hollows, you are live. We are looking at the first, first uh, photo you have up. Yeah, that's actually the first sheet one of two of the drawings that you have. Yes. It shows really where the property is located. It's uh, off of River Bend Road. Shadow Lane is the <laughs> cul-de-sac street. Um, and Park Avenue is, is kind of bar over by the border. If I go to my second drawing, it's, it's just, again, this is sheet two or two of the drawings you have. One side shows proposed condition, one sh side shows existing condition. And what I've done is colorized the side that is the existing conditions. And we'll need to mark this one as A1? Yes. And this is the well, colorized just, version of which one? Existing, existing con conditions. Existing conditions, thank you. So this property, well, it's known as 24 Shadow Lane. It's lot 77 block 504. Um, it is in the R15 zone. It contains 8,579 square feet. It's approximately 78 feet wide by 117 feet deep. And as you can see, we've got this colorized drawing. It's a one-story frame dwelling, a paved driveway, got a walkway up to the front of the house, and you got a couple of walkways and a little wood platform in the rear, and the trees are kind of around the perimeter. The property slopes uh, diagonally from the right corner towards the left rear corner, right front to the left rear. And you can see that we show the houses on either side of, you know, the edge of the houses on either side of the property. Mm -hmm. And just to, just to kind of give you some background, this, is, this subdivision was done in 1941, and it certainly wasn't done with the R15 requirements in mind. Um, since our lot, and this, be, this is really C1 hardship variances, the lot area required is 15,000 square feet. And this lot is 8,579 square feet. The lot width required is 100 feet. And uh, the existing is 76.84 feet. The lot depth requirement is 130. And this lot has 116 feet of uh, lot depth. And then as far as the existing house goes, uh, the minimum front yard in the R15 zone is 50 feet. And this house sits back at 34.7 feet. The minimum side yard is 12 feet for one side yard, and we're at 9.5 feet. And that would be this back corner over here on the right side. The minimum side yard combined is 30 feet, and our total is 24 feet. And the second side yard is 14.5 feet. Present building. Yes. None of these measurements are changing. It's just an expansion vertical rise so there's there's only one one thing that's going to change um and we, we can get to that in, the, in just a, a minute or two sure. the building present building coverage um is 14.6 where you're allowed 15 other impervious coverage is at 11.7 where you're allowed 10 and the total is um 25.67 where 25 is allowed what the applicant and i'll go on to the next drawing and this is the proposed conditions, which we'll really don't look this, much different than the original. We'll mark because this one A2, uh, proposed colorized. Yes, please. It really doesn't look much different than the original uh, plan. 
you've got the, the same basic footprint of the house. The driveway remains the same, so one car garage. The walkway is going to change a little bit because now we're going to put on a new stoop, covered stoop porch in the front. And that's really where the new setback, front yard setback changes slightly. I mean, very slightly. That's um, like point two. Yeah, it, it goes from 34.7 to 34.5. Yeah. And in the back, there's a little bump out. And then there's steps that go down. And the bump out is, is really an architectural feature. So with this proposal, again, we have a front yard setback that changes. The building coverage goes to, from to 15.8. Maximum other coverage goes to 11.5, and the total coverage would be at 27.3. That, that's the proposal. And just to, um, just to go on a little bit more, this is my zoning chart. I don't know. We've got, kind of gone through the numbers. I don't know that we need to go through them again unless you'd like to. I'm, I, I'm OK, I think. OK. This is the existing house that's, that's out there. And so it's a photograph I took probably a few days before the, the meeting that was going to take place last and Mr. month. Mr. Hollow, this has not been submitted to the board yet, this photo? This has not been submitted. So we'll mark this A3. And Mr. Hollow, you took this photo? I took this photo myself, yes. And when did you take this? Uh, probably a few days before that, the meeting that was going to be April 29th. OK, so early April. So this gives an accurate depiction of what the house looks like today. Yes. Great, thanks. And this is really the architectural, the first page of the architect's plan. And this is what the house would look like um, with the second story on. And here you have the front porch where we have that new variance. And as our and chairman that, normally likes to say, it's a, a box on a box without being disrespectful. It's just one on top of the other. That's with correct. A, with a nicer finish when done. Yes. And this is what uh, Mr. Santori was indicating before. This is really the proposed conditions. You don't have it, so. Um, A4, proposed conditions colorized with patio. You've got the same house, the same driveway, same walkways. The only thing we've added is this lighter tan color, um, a proposed 12 by 12 patio or potential patio there um, that we would like the board to consider. And that that outside, bring, of, outside of size, it meets all other variance requirements for setbacks, correct? Yes. It's just coverage. It's just size. And it brings up the maximum lot coverage up to um, 29%. So I'll, I'm going to leave it to the board. I'm OK with the uh, proposed change um, today. If uh, Mr. Glia, any concerns? No, I'm fine with the change. Mr. Sylvester? No, it looks good. Mr. Nappy? No, that's fine. Mr. Ringwood? I'm good. I think it looks a great project. Okay. Uh, Mr. Santori, Mr. Hollis, so we're, we're okay discussing the patio uh, today. Great. And Mr. Mr. Hollis, can you please provide the exact dimensions so that the board has that of what the patio is that you're calculating to get that additional coverage that we discussed and then give me the proposed other coverage breakdown based upon that change and then reiterate the final coverage so that it's clear for Ms. Wolf for her purposes. The patio that's shown on the drawing is 12 by 12, 144 square feet. Okay. It brings the other coverage to 13.2. Okay. And it brings the total lot coverage to 29%. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And an undersized lot by 42%. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This one's not even close. And, you know, the, the, the first application was 15,000 and they had 12,000. We're, we're almost half the size of, um, yeah, you're you're forty two percent less, so it's I mean you're sixty something percent of total. Anyway, in our total imper increase in impervious coverage is only around three hundred square feet. So, right. Great. Um, any, I mean, I think at this point in time, Mr. Hollows has kind of walked through, and and I think Mr. Cobiello aptly put it this box on a box concept, this is an exacerbation of the setbacks due to the increase in height for the, you know, requiring the relief because we're now moving that second story 
closer to the side setback lines. Um, you know, any questions of Mr. Hollows regarding any of the numbers, facts, figures, or engineering questions um, relative to that? I'm going to open. Uh, I look for open to members of the public. Uh, so, can we get a motion for to open to members of the public? So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Ringwood and a second by second by Mr. Sylvester. This is now open to members of the public. If there is a member of the public that would like to speak, Mr. Leister, so let me uh, bring you off mute and you can address the professional. Uh, so now the uh, total impervious surface has increased even more since we reviewed the application. So uh, I'm asking what is the engineer or the applicant going to do to retain stormwater management? What stormwater management uh, will the applicant undertake? I will definitely. Um... Well, wait, no, that's for Mr. Hollows. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> let's leave it to the, let's leave it to the engineer. The expert. Got it. <laughs> if the board were to approve this application, we would be preparing a grading plan that would go to the building department and also Mr. Sulfaro would review it. Um, I would work out with Mr. Sulfaro stormwater management requirements, but you know, this we're only talking 300 square feet. I mean, to, even to put a dry well in, it's only gonna make, maybe be three feet, four feet tops and thighs. Um, may look to do something different, a gravel trench or, or something like that because of the, the increase is so small. But um, I really haven't gotten to that. But those are really the kind of things that we would look to do for this. So um, you would you would really, for working with the township professionals to make sure that it meets the requirements from the engineer. That's correct. And the front lawn, the front is a lawn area. We really want don't want to disturb that too much. Um, and the, the backyard is a lawn, and it really, the, as far as the footprint, we're you know we have that little bump out in the back, and we have the patio. That's really about it as far as the increase in impervious coverage. Very fair. Mr. Leister, any other questions? I, I don't know where, whether the downspouts are connected somehow directly to the street, either through a driveway or whatever. Could you re, you know, disconnect drive uh, the, the downspouts from? Uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't th I don't recall anything being taken to the street. I think it goes right out onto the lawn. Okay. There is a sump pump in the uh, basement that goes out to uh, the street, but that's been there forever, I guess. I, I'm not sure the exact time frame when that was installed, but it's been in the basement for a long time. But we could, we could evaluate that just like with all the other recommendations that the town has. That, that I think Mr. Hall stipulated that he'll work with our township engineer to make sure that it, it meets their approval and we'll leave it to the professionals to decide where. Yeah, Mr. Hollows and Mr. Sulfaro have been working together for quite some time and they always come up with reasonable solutions to make sure the townships and applicants needs are, are met aptly well. I deal with it in a lot of post resolution conditions and we go through and make sure that everything is, um, you know, responded to accordingly. So we're, we're comfortable with that. Thank you. Very good. Any other members of the public wish to speak on this application, please virtually or physically raise your hand. Seeing no other members of the public. Uh, hold on, Mr. Leister, your hand was still raised. Did this, was there something else that you wanted to say? Sorry, you were, you were on mute. I'm oh, sorry, I should have lowered my hand. I guess no, it doesn't no, that's automatically okay. just make, lower. Just wanted to make sure we didn't skip you. Um, seeing I, no other members of the public, I'm gonna ask for a motion to close to members of the public. Make a motion. Uh, we got a motion by Mr. D'Elia and a second by? I'll second. By Mr. Nappy, this motion is, uh, is now closed to members of the public. Any questions from the board on this application? Yeah, I have one, Mike. Yeah, Mr. Blair, please. On on the plan, on the plot plan, it looks like is that the family room that's getting bumped out the back? Mr. Hollows, do you have? Uh, do you want to bring that back up on the screen? <laughs> uh, well, if your IT guy left, it's okay. <laughs> I'll try. Do do you know what that the, the bump out in the I, back? I can it's take the, a quick look at the, the. It is the family room, Mr. Delia. We have submitted, for purposes of this application, as part of your packages, everyone should have received a um, series of eleven by seventeen drawings that were um, from Wellish Architect. 
If we look at page four of that four. packet, it shows the first floor plan and second floor plan side by side. Yes. And it's the family room that shows the bump out area and the stairs are coinciding coming off the dinette. And my question, and I don't know who would be able to answer this, but on the plot plan, it looks like just a, a square box being extended. But yet on the blueprints, page A4, there looks like there's an extension of the fireplace. Fireplace probably would be cantilevered, so that doesn't become part of the overall. Okay, that, that answers my question perfectly. Yep. I think it's just a, um, let me look at the rear elevation one second, Mr. D'Elia, just to confirm. Yeah, when I look at the top shot of the roof, I don't see an extension of a chimney coming back up through the middle. And if you Chimneys look- Chimney's being the, taken down. If you look at the All left right. side elevation, Mr. D'Elia, in A1, you'll see the box out and you'll actually see the chimney vent on the direct vent coming off that in the top right corner. Um, bottom left corner of A1 is the front elevation, top right corner, left side elevation, which shows the bump out, which is the direct vent um, fireplace. And it's a uh, cantilever. I do see it now. Thank no, you. No problem. Mr. Ringwood? I'm good. Mr. Sylvester? I'm good. Mr. Nappy? Very good. And again, assuming uh, all sides will match in the construction when completed, it'll fit into the neighborhood as, as planned. Yes. No trees because you're just going on top. No other real changes to the property. No. Amanda, I, don't, I can't think of any uh, other. Uh, just the downward directed lighting, but I don't know if that's really necessary on this one. No. So can I get a motion for approval or denial based on all stipulations? I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion for approval of Mr. Dalia. A second? I'll I'll second. second. I got a second by Mr. Sylvester. Roll call. Mr. Caviello? Yes. Mr. Dalia? Yes. Mr. Nappy? Yes. Mr. Ringwood? Yes. Mr. Sylvester? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Congratulations. Good luck on your project. Your resolution David, should be luck. ready in June. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Uh, Bill, you want to stay on the meeting a minute because we got to take care of Mr. Garrett? Yes. Yes. That brings us to the next item on the agenda, which is request for amendments to prior approvals application 2620 129 <clears throat> Hamilton. This is in reference to an LOI that had been requested, talked about, uh, then put into the resolution after our, our conversation. And uh, so I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Santori, to. Or uh, just by way of background, I'll recap a little bit. Um, we had had obviously our hearing back at the end of last year. And um, when I had received Amanda's resolution, I had flipped it over to Mr. Hollows and to, and to my client. And I, at that moment, sometimes I don't have the ability to sit down and read nine, 10 pages. And by the time I got back to it, it already had been voted on. <laughs> so when I saw the condition later on, somebody pointed out to me and said, hey, like, you know, it says this LOI in there. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Because we had, we had had some discussion about this. Mr. Leister had testified about certain things, but Mr. Hollow specifically indicated that he had walked the property, performed some visual observations and did not notice any wetlands in the area that the property was. And I'm, you know, Mr. Hollows is here to obviously verify his testimony, but by way of recap, indicated that from top of bank, we were approximately 65 feet from the riparian zone, 50 foot riparian buffer in this instance, and we had uh, not envisioned any disturbance of that. So I had kind of thought we had requested that the LOI would have been a little bit over and above because obviously it's an expense and time consuming to the client. Um, but nevertheless, it made its way in and obviously some review had triggered from the engineering department to basically say, hey, you know, we have this condition out there. What are we doing about it? Made its way back to my desk and then we, we talked about it from there. So from that point in time, I had asked uh, the board, if uh, the board attorney, if I could get back on and discuss this matter interimly as you know, some fortune, I guess would have it. I had a conversation with Mr. Solfaro um, relative to this and I had engaged the services of David Kruger this morning from uh, ETI wetlands. 
So Mr. Kruger is an, a wetlands expert that Mr. Hollows and I have often used and many people are familiar with as is Mr. Solfaro. We had had an opportunity for him to visit the property today. Um, he prepared an email. He didn't obviously have time to get back to his office to generate a, a formal report. That email I flipped to Mr. Warner and I copied Mr. Solfaro on it. Obviously neither one of those were on the meeting. When I had done that, I, didn't, I wasn't in the hearing and I didn't see that it was Amanda who was sitting in tonight. So the nature of it, and I will read it into the record and I will certainly supply it to Mr. Solfaro because um, you know, obviously this has to be to Mr. Solfaro's. Um, we would just request obviously that to the extent that the board is acceptable with this, that it be left for Mr. Sofaro's review to confirm these representations that I'm making. And of course- and Just to step back one moment. I think Mr. Sofaro had also, had also sent an email earlier today, Thursday, to Steve, and I think you were copied August. Yes. Just confirming that he had also looked into it and he is comfortable with the results if, if the board wants to leave it to his discretion. Great. And I'm just gonna read into the record what the email was from Mr. Uh, Kruger for the board's edification and for the record. Augie, we inspected the site today. Our inspection found that the limit of proposed disturbance is outside of any wetlands transition area. Soil samples revealed Munsell soil color chart readings of zero to eight inch 0. 0.7.5 YR, four over four or whatever that means, eight to 18 inches, 7.5 YR, no, hydro, no hydric indicators or redoxomorphic features. The area of disturbances and within 50 feet was a maintained lawn with landscaping. Other vegetation consisted of red maple, Norway maple, Japanese barberries and Virginia creeper. Conclusion, project is not within a wetland or wetland transition area and require, and, um, or wetland transition area requiring any uh, approvals, okay? That's it, let me know if you have any questions. I don't, I, I'm gonna open to members of the public to make comment. Um, and then we can just, so can I get a motion to open to members of the public? I'll make a motion. We have a, we have a motion by Mr. Delia and a second by? I'll I'll second. Second by Mr. Nappy. And any members of the public would like to discuss this application? Mr. Leister, let's uh, bring you off mute. Just wanted to ask, so this other person, not Mr. Hollis, but this other person who is apparently um, evaluated the property. Did he evaluate the property from the rear of the property up to where uh, uh, 50 feet in from the bank or was he just interested in the area that was um, where the construction was taking place? So um, certainly I was not there at the property. This is what we provided to him so the board is aware. I provided to him a complete um, site plan of everything um, of the entire survey, Mr. Hollow's plan, the proposed plan that was approved, the disturbance plan, everything. So he evaluated the entire area as my understanding, but irrespective, we are certainly comfortable if the board is willing to put a condition in. Obviously, I'm not saying that this is done and closed. Mr. Solfaro has to review these submissions and to the extent that additional conversations need to occur between Mr. Hollow's or Mr. Kruger and Mr. Solfaro to the extent that everyone is comfortable, um, I just happened to have the luxury of tracking him down today and trying to get as much information for the board. And he kind of did me a favor to do it, to try and move this along. My main goal was simply this. I wanted to try and see if I could help out Mr. Garapath to get closer to being able to get to some construction points on his project. And that was really the, the genesis of trying to move him along. That's all. Uh, the one other question is, it would be that if that back part of the property truly is within a riparian zone or a buffer zone to, or to uh, would the applicant be willing to plant appropriate native plants back there instead of having lawn? Mr. Hollis, your thought, I mean, obviously this is a, a, an improved parcel as we speak now. Um, and obviously, <laughs> given the fact that we've added the pool, it's certainly taking up a piece of the of the property. At, you know, to disturb it and pull out lawn to put in different species. I, I you know, I mean, he's, he's, he actually at this point he actually has vegetation back there. There's a, a row of evergreens that goes along the side property line. That would be the it's a westerly property line, and then across the back. Um, 
and then he's got a small shed in the in the corner. I I really don't see the the need to put additional plantings in there. He's got a, a nice screening, as I recall, that goes across you know, the one side and he, he puts some additional screening in on the eastern <laughs> side of the property line. And I guess I would just submit at this point in time that we've obviously already went through the, the mechanics of this and really the purpose of this was simply to determine whether or not the condition as to the LOI was required or not required. And, and I think really that's the focus because we already talked about all that planting and introduced all that information on the existing site conditions. I know it's been a while for the board since they looked at this, but I can, he's actually spent a lot of time and money buffering his property as, as it exists. Yeah, I think Mr. Sands, I think you're right. We're, we're here to discuss the LOI, not the application. So yes. we'll, we'll leave it, we'll leave it to that. So Amanda, how do we proceed here? Should, um, again, do we, do we have a vote accepting what Mr. Santori had read in as well as the letter we'd all received from Tom Sofaro saying that he would accept the expert's testimony and we could leave it in his hands to decide <laughs> how do we move forward? I mean, personally, I'm okay saying that, that the letter that Mr. Santori read into evidence is uh, from a professional. And if our professional is okay with dealing with it, what, how do we move forward? Well, let's mark the letter from Mr. Shafaro as board exhibit one, just so it's clear on the record that's Sofaro. And then we can mark the email from Augie to Steve as B2, because then we'll have it in the record. And it does say exactly what Augie represented. It says I was reading along with him, including those weird numbers and whatnot. Um, and, then, and then the letter from Mr. Sofaro, should we mark that in the email? That's B1. B1. And then B2 will be Augie's. And then as far as what we do, it is an application, well, an application, if you will, to amend a condition of approval. So we would just be voting on whether we can amend that condition, i.e. remove it. So that's what we would have a motion to amend that resolution. And once again, Mr. Coviello, subject to Mr. Sofaro's final approval, not yeah. that it's being ultimately removed tonight, but subject to his approval. Correct. Okay. So can we get a motion for approval to remove the condition based on Mr. Just for Sofaro. the record, there's no one in the public though, right? Right. Someone... Just Mr. Leister. Just Mr. Leister. Okay, perfect. So, can, so yeah, uh, a motion for approval to remove the condition based upon uh, Tom Sofaro's approval. So moved. And a second? Second. And a sec uh, so an approval, uh, first by Mr. Ringwood and a second by Mr. Sylvester. Roll call. Mr. Cobiello. Yes. Mr. D'Elia? Yes. Mr. Nappy? Yes. Mr. Ringwood? Yes. Mr. Sylvester? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Little good news for your client this evening. Yes, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for uh, entertaining this. And uh, Ms. Wolf, uh, thank both to you and Mr. Warner for uh, help facilitating getting this on the agenda. We do appreciate it, and uh, Mr. Garapath certainly appreciates it. And thank you guys for working with my schedule. My uh, my my team definitely appreciates it. So. Yeah, no worries. It was our last game of the season, and I didn't want to abandon them. I didn't miss a, a single <laughs> inning, and I didn't want to walk out halfway through the game. So now we've all been there. And uh, so the, the last uh, piece on the agenda was carried to June 24th, uh, with no further notice required, which is application 1720, Mr. Santori, which is Great. yours, 391 Springfield Avenue. Perfect. We'll deal with that next month as well. Great. We'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you, guys. Be well. Great. Very good. Good night. Amanda, good night. seeing there are no members of the public left, considering it's the five board members, yourself and Regina, do we need to open to members of the public and then close to members of the public if it's just the seven? No, we can just note on the record that it's, there's no one here. There is. There is nobody here but the, the five board members and our two professionals. <laughs> my agenda. Okay, can we get a motion to close the meeting? I'll move. A motion by Mr. Nappy and a second by? I move. Sylvester? We are adjourned. Good night, guys, and ladies. Good night.